I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Commission of July 8th, 2020. A printed agenda is available outside the hearing room and a copy of the full agenda, including the staff reports, is available at the front of the chambers with the clerk. The Open Meetings Act is posted just inside the doors at the back of the room. In order to meet the required social distancing protocols, we must limit the number of people inside the chambers. Staff is assisting individuals who are present and wish to testify on items on today's agenda by ensuring that each person has signed in. Staff will direct you into the chambers based on what items you are testifying on and your position on that item. Please note we will only bring those attendees into the chambers for the agenda item they are interested in when that hearing begins. We are requiring attendees in the chambers to sit in a socially distanced manner, six feet apart from other people not in your immediate group. If there are more than 25 people attending for a particular agenda item, staff will bring additional attendees into the chamber as people testify and then leave the chambers. Once you have testified, you should exit the chambers using the doors to the right of the desk, and then the next testifier can come to the microphone and begin testifying. In addition, for the added protection of all those involved, the Planning Commission will be allowing testimony on agenda items by video conference for individuals who pre-registered with the Planning Department prior to today's hearing. This <coughs> testimony will be taken following the completion of the live testimony for each item based on position. Based on estimations, we are staggering the start times of various hearings over several hours. These times are identified in parentheses on the agenda. We are encouraging attendees to arrive no more than 15 minutes before their scheduled hearing. Please note that an agenda item will not begin before the time posted. In the event that the allocated hearing times go quicker than estimated, there will be breaks in the hearing. If you parked in the parking garage across the street to the north, the gate is open and no parking coupons are needed. Out of courtesy for those attending this meeting, commissioners and the staff, Cellular phone usage is not permitted in these chambers during any portion of this meeting. We appreciate your cooperation. The Planning Commission action today is final on the following agenda items. 1.3, Special Permit 05015B. 2.1, Special Permit 17030A. 4.1, Special Permit 20020 and 4.2C, Preliminary Plat 20002. Any aggrieved person may appeal final action of the Planning Commission to the City Council or the County Board by filing a Notice of Appeal with the, with the Clerk within 14 days following the action of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission action on all other items is a recommendation to the City Council or the County Board. The first item of business is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held June 24, 2020. So move, Campbell. Second, Becky. Yes. Jerry. Okay. Campbell. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Joy. Yes. Ryman Yost. Yes. Becky. Yes. Yes. Core. Yes. Motion carried, six to zero. The next item of business is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda will be called at the same time and will not be scheduled for a separate public hearing unless there is a request from someone wishing to speak or at the request of a commission member. I will ask Jerry to read all of the consent agenda items into the record. Once those items are read, she will ask if there is anyone wishing to speak. If you wish to speak on an item on the consent agenda, we would ask that you stand and state that item. That item will then be removed from the consent agenda and scheduled as a separate public hearing under section three of today's agenda. All items remaining on the consent agenda will be voted upon in total with a motion for approval. Jerry, will you please call the items on the consent agenda? Yes, thank you. First, I want to note that item 1.3, change of zone 05015B, is being removed from the consent agenda for a separate public hearing. First item is item 1.1A, comprehensive plan conformance 20009, to review as to conformance with the Lincoln Lancaster County Comprehensive Plan, a request to declare approximately 2.6 acres of city of Lincoln property as surplus and the associated change of zone 20020 to change the zoning from P public district to B1 business district for approximately 0.47 acres of land. Both of these are located, generally located at 2510 South 48th Street. Item 1.2 is comprehensive plan conformance 
200102 review as to conformance with the Lincoln Lancaster County Comprehensive Plan. A request to declare the approximately 26,980 square feet of City of Lincoln owned pro parking lot as surplus on property generally located at the southwest corner of 14th and N Streets. Item 1.4, a special permit 18023A to allow for the reduction of a portion of the front yard setback from 25 feet to 15 feet for a freestanding sign on property generally located at South Folsom and West B Streets. Item 1.5 is text amendment 20004 to amend chapter 27 of the Lincoln Municipal Code, sections 27.69.020 and section 27.69.240 by allowing up to two menu board signs for each drive through lane in conjunction with an eating establishment utilizing ordering from the vehicle and adding a definition for menu board signs and the repealing said sections as hitherto existing. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on these items? I don't see any. Are there any ex parte communications that took place or additional <coughs> information you learned while visiting the sites? None of those either. Okay. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on any of these consent agenda items? If so, please stand and state that item. Okay. I Go I'll ahead. Move approval of the consent agenda as amended. We're moving 1.3. Second, Second, Joy. Yep. Okay. Fury? Okay. Campbell? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Joy? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Core? Yes. Motion carried 6 to 0. I will now ask Jerry to call any requests for deferral received prior to this meeting. Okay. We have received a request for deferral of item 2.1, special permit 17030A to allow for a medical clinic space in addition to the combination of office space and dwelling units associated with the designated landmark on property generally located at 2202 South 11th Street. This would defer this item to, uh, to the July 22nd Planning Commission hearing. So moved. Second, Joy. Jerry. Okay, this is for the two week deferral of special permit 17030A. Campbell? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Joy? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Core? Yes. Motion carried 6 to 0. Is there anyone here wishing to testify on these agenda items today instead of waiting until the July 22nd hearing? And actually, this would be specifically for special permit 17030A. Okay, um, we will now proceed to public hearings. The staff will make a brief presentation. The applicant will then be requested to present his or her testimony, followed by those who wish to testify in support, followed by those who wish to testify in opposition. The staff will then be given an opportunity to respond to the testimony, and then the applicant shall have an opportunity for rebuttal. If during your testimony, you have copies of documents or materials you would like distributed to the Planning Commission members and or included as part of the record, Please provide that information right up here in this manila folder. Each person testifying should state their name and address and shall have five minutes to speak unless additional time is requested and granted. The timer will go off after four minutes. Then you will have one minute to wrap up your testimony. The Planning Commission will vote immediately at the close of the public hearing unless the Commission votes to defer action or continue the public hearing. Jerry, will you please call the first public hearing item? Yes, item 3.1 is special permit 05015B to allow up to 312 single family lots and revision of the layout and drainage study with waivers to lot dimensions, lot block length, pedestrian way easements, and allow for double frontage lots and sanitary sewer design standards on property generally located at North 14th Street and Fletcher Avenue. This is final action on this item unless appealed to the City Council within 14 days. Staff recommendation is conditional approval. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed? I don't see any. Are there any ex parte communications that took place or additional information you learned while visiting this site? No, okay. Mr. Hendrickson. Steve Hendrickson with the Planning Department. The application before you is an amendment to a previously approved uh, special permit for a community unit plan. We are generally, as shown on the 
uh, map here, we are north of Fletcher Avenue. Oh, uh, it's not showing yet. West Just of a 14th second. Street. It'll come. There we, there we go. go. So north of Fletcher Avenue, west of 14th Street. Um, the entire project is shown in the dark outline here. It goes all the way up to uh, Humphrey Avenue on the north side. The development has generally been starting on the north part and working on its way toward the south. So the vast majority of this amendment is really to revise the uh, lot layout on the southern portion of the site. Um, this particular area, you have a lot of urban development to the east. I-80 is just off to the corner, but a lot of the surrounding area is uh, currently AG zoned and uh, is primarily agricultural use or a lot of uh, larger acreage lots. So the layout for the development when it is complete is shown, and we'll kind of zoom in here on the southern portion of it. Uh, so one of the main things was they, the applicant has been working with Lincoln Transportation and Utilities on revising Pennsylvania Avenue, Humphrey, Pennsylvania, and uh, Fletcher in this area. None of them operate as arterial streets. Uh, so they function more like collector streets. So this is adding a uh, traffic circle here uh, at 11th Street on Pennsylvania. Uh, to generally try to make sure that as this street eventually connects over to Pennsylvania between 1st and 7th, which is a rural gravel road today, uh, that we're trying to keep traffic speeds relatively low on that street. And then down on the southern end, the biggest change is that currently today, I'll quick show the, the layout today, the current plan as we have it has lots that front on Fletcher Avenue and would have driveways on Fletcher Avenue. Fletcher is uh, built to rural standards, so it does not have sidewalks, it does not have a curb. And so, again, in discussing the, this street and potential improvements, the layout is being revised so that the lots actually back up to Fletcher Avenue. One of the conditions of approval is that the applicant is going to, rather than uh, <coughs> repaving and rebuilding Fletcher Avenue themselves, which would also benefit the property owner to the south when that property redevelops, They'll be making a contribution instead for the improvement of Fletcher as well as to have a traffic circle or roundabout uh, built here on Fletcher Avenue as well, where today Fletcher does go all the way through from 1st to 14th and really serves as the main collector today. In the future, Humphrey and Pennsylvania would also connect through between 1st and 14th Street. Uh, in order to do that, they had to do a fairly substantial revision to the layout. It resulted in a reduction of the number of dwelling units in the property from 347 uh, to 312. There's also a drainage way and an LES power line that runs through the site, which resulted in some of the block lengths being slightly longer than typical. Uh, and because of some of the adjacent acreage development, uh, which is um, unlikely to develop, uh, there's some additional waivers in, in terms of also an additional pedestrian easement waiver. Uh, staff supported all the waivers they had in there. The other ones that are re regards to lot area, lot width, are quite typical in a development where we have a mix of both single family and there's also some townhome lots in here. Um, and so with that, we had recommended a conditional approval and be happy to answer any questions. Steve, I know one of the letters that we received talked about um, animals that are native to this area is that taken into account like what department looks into those kinds of things when we receive plans like this uh, these type of reviews at at the local level do not get into uh, reviews of the impact it may have on animals that are moving through the site etc uh, there are various uh, typically state or federal agencies that might deal with wetlands or endangered species certainly no endangered species have been identified on the site <coughs> Uh, but it's not uncommon for urban development to result in the fact that where deer today eat, they have to move on to another site. They also talked about a pump house. Do you, is that, should I ask you or should I ask the applicant? Uh, that'd that? be a better question for the okay. applicant. I have a couple questions. On um, the deferment that we're doing for Fletcher, 
is that then taking in in the future that that would have then roundabouts, turning lanes, and those types of things at that location? Uh, the, yes, it, we're, instead of having a right hand and a left hand turn lane, um, a roundabout or traffic circle would do that in instead. And so, okay. yes, ultimately Fletcher will then become the city's responsibility to improve in the future. And whenever we get uh, some development come forward on the south side, that land has been for sale, and we've had people ask, talk to us about development. We would be looking at a, a very similar contribution in terms of having them also help with the improvement of the roadway as well. Okay, and then um, is this then designed so that those future improvements can happen? Um, yes, there, there will be a small change in order to show an actual circle or a roundabout at the intersection, but otherwise, uh, other than that change, LTU had recommended approval of it. Okay. Any other questions right now? No. Okay. We're ready for the applicant. Hi, I'm Marcia Kinning, RIA Engineering, representing HH Development. Um, I think Steve did a great job on kind of going through everything. I kind of wanted to address those letters that did come in because um, I know that there's quite a few little questions that they they had. Um, the one was with the structures that are existing on the south side of the property. Um, the developer, um, his his father actually passed away a couple years ago, and so he was now the ones that are the president and vice president, the children. They were unaware of Sorry, items happening <laughs> in those structures. So since this has been called to their attention, they are taking care of that. They're they're already doing um, things, getting permits to to get those residences to Can come Can you down. point out on the map which ones those, are, those like two lots are? I, I believe it's down in here is where those two homes are, okay. which is, it's so small, you can't really see them, but they're those. Oh, right, right there. Yeah. There, I, you can see two houses here. Can, can you see them? Yeah. Okay. That would be the new block 16 about? Um, yes, yeah, it's like, Block 16, actually the, the street might go through them. Okay. And, and that phase is actually the last, I, I apologize because I only had this big guy. Um, that phase is the one that will be the last phase to do. Um, so I think we'll be taking care of the homes before that comes about. Can you say taking care of the homes, are you are they planning just to like tear them down to There's kind one of one that, that is really bad. Um, I think that one will just be taken down. Mm -hmm. um, the other one I am not sure what the developer has planned. I believe that one also will probably just be taken down. But that'll happen sooner rather than later. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just to eliminate what's going on there. Sure. Um, there was an, another comment that wasn't really in the letters, but it, it came from the same person. Um, in, I'll use this one. There's um, block 14 that kind of wraps around this cul-de-sac. In previous applications, this I had called out as black, block 20 and removed it because since we have a cul-de-sac, there is no street. So I changed it to block 14. The numbering of the lots did not get changed. That was my fault, human. <laughs> <laughs> and so those will be changed before it's actually approved. Sure. Um, other comments, um, you had mentioned the, the pump. Yeah, station. they had a question about a pump house. Right, and, and I'm not sure what they were talking about um, exactly, because um, with the next phase, which what we're presenting would be, this area would be the next phase, it can be sewered. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if they're talking about pump house as, as sewer or water. I, I don't know 
um, I think they were just under the impression that one was needed so right there there is one of the last phases up in the northwest corner that is can't be sewered until we have a sewer line that goes through property that's not owned by the developer and so that's another phase that is kind of towards the end of of development because we just can't um, get sewer there so i don't know if that maybe is what they were thinking um, was the area that needed the the pump house um, there were questions about water runoff and with that uh, the 10 and 100 year through the study that we've done um, it shows that it actually decreases in the runoff um, with the development not increases the the two year does increase but we're kind of working with watershed to try and get that to also be lower um, after development so can you explain kind of what happens um, or what you guys are doing that creates that decrease in the 10 year and 100 year um, very good question I am NOT an engineer okay <laughs> um, but I think it's with the pipe sizing that uh, our, our guys have been putting in that actually allows it then to um, slow down and not uh, um, go through so fast type of thing and we have detention areas to hold the water so I, I think that's what they kind of use to to get those numbers to come down great okay um, the connection to Fletcher um, is the last phase um, I think there was a, a question on how much traffic was coming down through there and uh, we're not connecting to, to Humphrey um, and, and Fletcher uh, Humphrey we're already connected to but F Fletcher we're not connecting to that right now um, the outlots the open space that we've shown um, it it's the pedestrian easements that we're asking not to put in there's there are connections to these open spaces through that um, so that's why we're asking for those pedestrian sidewalks not really to be put in because there is connections already um, and I don't know if there's anything else I, I can't think of anything else that was kind of in those letters do you have any questions no questions questions mm -mm. tell us a little bit about the timeline the time frame of of what how we're going to move forward mm -hmm. um, the first phase that I kind of showed you that's mm -hmm. in kind of in here um, that we're thinking on hopefully moving forward yet this fall and in the spring um, and then we'll see how that goes you know it's like we don't really know <laughs> sure. how the market's going um, and that'll predict you know the next phase of when that goes forward I can't remember um, you guys did a traffic study right um, no there was no traffic study must be thinking of another one okay any other questions right now no okay thank you you bet all right testimony in support testimony in support of this application okay oh no okay testimony in opposition come on forward thank you the name's Keith Spilker I live at 900 Fletcher Avenue and I believe hopefully you have my letter and pictures I'm going to read through this and uh, Marcia address part of it which is good since we've talked to him but I think there's some things that she has basically left out that I would like to get clarified so again uh, was there anything else I need on the record part of the okay could you give your address mm -hmm. yes 900 Fletcher Avenue again thank you for this opportunity to speak to you about this special permit application I own the property adjacent at 900 Fletcher Avenue I'm here today to request that any action on this permit be postponed 
and an additional condition be added and completed before approval. Um, overall, I have no objections to the project. Uh, in fact, the reduction in the lots in that south portion between Pennsylvania and Humphrey is much uh, uh, needed and, and welcome. And so too is the elimination of the drive access along Fletcher Avenue. Not being a fan of roundabouts, I'm not too happy about those two, but we can certainly live with those. So why be opposed to the permit? Um, for me, that question came about 15 years ago when the property was acquired. So there are two properties at 1000 Fletcher Avenue and 1220 Fletcher Avenue where the uh, prior owners moved out and the houses have been unoccupied. And those houses and related outbuildings still stand today, but in decaying and collapsing condition. In addition, the area around the structures is unkept and not maintained, having never been mowed or cleared of overgrown shrubs and fallen trees and branches. I have submitted for your review current pictures of each property. You will note their deteriorating condition. Walls and roofs are collapsing. Windows are broken and vandalism is apparent. The structures are literally falling down. In addition, it is actually difficult to see the structures due to overgrown nature of trees, shrubs, grasses, and weeds on the property. Due to their condition, the properties reduce property values in the area as who wants to live next to these properties. In addition, the properties are a public nuisance and hazard that draw unwanted and unwelcome visitors. They have been the subject of numerous visits from law enforcement over the years. The most recent call to the authorities came just five days ago on July 5th when two teenagers were found trespassing on the property at 1000 Fletcher Avenue and doing what teenagers often do, uh, horsing around and destroying property. This particular location of the 1000 Fletcher Avenue site is set far back from Fletcher Avenue, away from the road, and not visible from the street due to trees making it a target for this kind of activity. It has seen squatters, transients, and mischievous behaviors for the past 15 years. On occasion, one law enforcement official, a Lancaster Sheriff's deputy, commented that while not active, they had found evidence of a meth lab. That deputy even contacted the owner at the time and offered to schedule a fire training burn by the Raymond Fire Department at no cost to the owner, and the owner refused. As the property has been in the city limits for over 15 years, myself and other residents in the area have contacted various city departments and officials over the years trying to get the properties cleaned up. Over the last several months, we have stepped up our efforts by talking to Building and Safety, the Health Department, and our city council representative in the area. No department or individual seems able or willing to force the owner to clean up the properties. Just this week, I talked with one of the owners, Andy Hartman. He claims to know nothing, as we've heard from Marcia, about people coming onto the property. That may be all well and fine, but he did mention finding deer carcasses and other items on the property. So he's well aware that those properties are falling down even if he's supposedly not aware of people trespassing on his property. And yet, once again, there's no action to clean it up. So I'm here today to ask that this body do what other city agencies seem capable, incapable of doing, force cleanup of the property. The applicant has previously asked and is asking again today for various white waivers in this development. I'm asking now that the city put this other condition into place. It's time for someone to step up and force the applicant to fulfill their social responsibility to maintain their property at an acceptable level. The decaying nature of the structure poses a health and safety issue. Those in the area deserve better than they have received these last 15 years. As we heard from the applicant, they supposedly care about the area and have plans in place. My comment is, Plans in place do not give us a timeline. Plans in place do not force them to do anything. Talk is cheap, action is hard to do, and we have not seen that over these past 15 years. The property should and could have been removed long ago and not allowed to progress, progress to their decaying state today. I propose then that the Planning Commission today delay action on this special permit until the applicant has met the following conditions. 
Number one, removed all of these structures from the property. Two, fill and grade any basements, foundation, walls, etc. And finally, mow and maintain the landscape on a regular basis. The above action could easily be completed in a timely basis and not impact the applicant's development plans in any other way. It would also help improve the reputation of the applicant with those living by the development. It is time the applicants show some consideration and become responsible neighbors and property owners. Again, I guess the, the, the main point to me is that this problem has been out here and we've lived with this for 15 years. We now see this as an opportunity to force something to happen. And again, giving lip service to a plan in place does not, in my mind, make it happen. And I certainly don't want to wait until possibly years later when they develop that south portion that it gets cleaned up. It needs to be cleaned up now. I will address one other comment from Steve. He mentioned the property across the street. My family owns that property. He mentioned it being for sale. That is no longer the case. It is off the market and there is no developer and no development plans in the works on that property. So if there's any kind of consideration about some sort of timeline for the South with that being involved with Fletcher and that kind of a thing, at this point in time, that should not be a consideration. Again, I thank you for your consideration and uh, if there's any questions, I can try to answer them. Sure, Dick. Um, are you on the north side of Fletcher? And I am on the north side of Fletcher. And west of and west this of Fletcher. Still up. It will come up in just a second. Okay. Here. So, I was wondering if you were the first property next to 14th or the second. I am this property right here on his west edge. Okay, so you're on the I'm you're on, on the, the west side of that property. I'm on the west side of his property. Okay. Yeah, and it is true those particular structures one is here and one is here and point out yours again mine is excuse me mine is this right okay this area. thank you so right adjacent to that property yeah those pictures that you sent us yes when did you take them when did they take them that was the end of may okay when we were trying to trying to illustrate to uh, the city because i i did an online thing at that particular time sending those pictures and some others in trying to get some city department involved in the cleanup and we have heard nothing back not even an acknowledgement from that at least that that is even received and I so we're just very very frustrated with this city process and we've seen that in the paper with some of the near south properties and finally that that they just can't get them cleaned up and i assume that no mowing or anything has taken place since that is correct this. there is no mowing there they, w they would look just like they do in that picture today any other questions right now okay thank you thank you very much other testimony in opposition come on up he hit all he hit all i'm charlie vogel i'm sorry good afternoon council member uh can you give us your address too 921 fletcher I'm just across the street from Mr. S Mr. Spilker there. Uh, I've been working with city council, Tammy Wynette, about cleaning this place up for, it's been going on a long time. And uh, it's, it's just about time that, that we do get something. I mean, I've got, she's got all the pictures. There's, there's that house he's talking about that's, uh, that's uh, falling down, the windows are out. Or busted up stuff. The other two is uh, right here, basically the, the old shed back in there. If you, I'll leave these with you. We have copies. We can make another copy. So anyway, uh, uh, this address is actually 1220. This one here, and the other one's 1000 Fletcher, is where this one was. So anyway, uh, he's. He talked about everything I have to say, but I, like I said, I have numerous problems. We've had uh, police out there numerous times. Uh, I talked to Joe Blaha from the Planning Commission Building and Safety. I've talked to the oh, health department, and it is a health de 
you know, this should have been taken care of a long time ago. But uh, now is your opportunity to help the, the city council out and the rest of them. They all know what's going on here. And, and uh, as far as me sitting here talking about the same thing, uh, uh, I'd just be wasting your time and mine. So, but I do would appreciate you guys take this in consideration and talk to the, Tammy, um, which you probably have. I'm quite sure you have. Everybody's been here in the last couple of months. I, I, I told her, I said, I'm not going to let it go. I said, it's been long enough, and I'm going to find somebody that can do something. So I appreciate it. You guys have a good afternoon. I have a quick question for you, sir, if you got a second. Uh, since you're out in the neighborhood quite a bit, and you live right there, um, people that are trespassing on this property, coming and going, so, so on and so forth, how do they do it? Do they? Uh, well, they just drive down the road. I mean, it's a long down the, dr it's the driveway. A good, it's a driveway that goes all there. It has 1,000 Fletcher there, and it's okay. a long driveway. It's about a quarter of a mile back there. Okay. And people just don't see it. You know, okay. he's had he's the <coughs> one that he can look out his patio door and see what's going on. Sure. So it, it's been going on for a long time, and I think it's an opportunity. Uh, the only thing I have is. If they want to develop this, I have no problem with it. But let's get these properties here on Fletcher cleaned up, mowed, and give them a 90 to 120 days. I don't want no 15-year proposal. I, I would like to have a, a time and a date back, and that's all I have asked. So I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Sir, you could leave those photos in that folder up on the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Any other testimony in opposition? Okay, um, staff. I have a question, does anyone else? Maybe, depending on what your question oh, yeah. is. <laughs> Go first, is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, can we put a condition of approval on there that they clean up these properties as part of this permit? Is that something? Yeah, it probably won't be appropriate given the condition. I mean, often we have developments that have perfectly usable houses on the site. They are integrated in the site plan, sometimes have a lot set for them, or they're going to be moved off the site. Um, but I, I think given the, the obvious condition of them, uh, what you could do is add a condition 2.3 um, that basically says uh, complete demolition permits and remove all structures at 1,000 and 1200 Fletcher Avenue prior to the next final plat. I'll read that again here in a second. But so uh, basically that way they're, before they come in with the next final plat, um, typically the final plat is when we're having properties and things addressed that are on site anyhow. Um, that would give them some time to line up a demolition company and get the everything removed. Um, it wouldn't be appropriate to, to delay the permit um, it's, uh, we need to take action. But this way, um, by having a condition 2.33 that said complete demolition permits and remove all structures at 1000 and 1200 Fletcher Avenue prior to the next final plat, that way we have something that says, well, until those are done, you can't take the next step forward with the final plats. That way they could continue with the lots that perhaps have already sold and have underway but as they move on to the next stage, um, they would need to have this done in advance. How long does it, I mean, I know each project is a little bit different, but how long would it be in your guess before they would be coming forward with that final plot? Uh, well, the applicant could address if they uh, are looking at doing one in the near term or not, um, but I think that would probably be the, the best tie between the two versus trying to give some uh, specific date. Okay. I believe she stated that they would try to do a, their first edition uh, this fall to next spring. But would that include this portion? Yes, this special okay. permit covers the entire prop the entire property. So once it's approved, it now becomes the special permit that we judge all final plats by. And if it has a condition in it, uh, that would be the one that we would think uh, we would then um, have to follow before we approved any more final plats. Okay, and then just so as people have things like this that come up in the future, what is the process if they didn't have this window of opportunity? 
Uh, sure. I mean, certainly working with Building and Safety Department is the process for anyone who has concerns about structures and, and their condition. Um, but as you know, there's always possible that somebody can just simply board them up safely and, and leave them. They don't necessarily have to demolish them. There have been some houses that have remained for, for years um, once they are secured uh, properly. I believe they could use the Uplink app too on the city website to report them. Yes, and I'm sorry, I don't have any specifics as to why these particular properties, where they are in the, in the circumstances, um, as to had they been investigated or not. Okay, so there is a process for Oh this yes, uh, absolutely. This would just be including that relative to the development, these properties are on the development site. They have no uh, use identified within the development um, and so they'd be appropriate for removal next before the next final plan. Any other questions for, okay, go ahead. Um, just to clarify, relinquishment of these driveways onto Fletcher is a part of this proposal, correct? Uh, correct. They're <coughs> uh, instead having lots that are backing up to Fletcher. Thank you. So does that mean that the those would be removed prior to this phase so uh, like would they still be able to access those driveways uh that, that's a good question i with demolition permits typically their focus is on removing all the structures the foundations all the rest of that um, i don't know that the the driveways are or a portion of that or not okay anyone else have questions nope okay applicant rebuttal Um, I, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be in support of having a condition to add that. Awesome. Um, I, I don't know if there is, I think they'd probably want to keep at least one driveway so that they can get in there and take care of the property um, once everything is removed. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know if you want to add that to the condition as well. Um, I had one more thing I was going to say, and I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, questions? Well, the, the only question that I would have for you is, um, you know, instead of demoing the, the houses right now and, and going through that part, which would be done anyway when grading occurs eventually on this, this, this project mm -hmm. years from now, but... Would you have any problem with just abandoning the, the driveways right now into Fletcher and uh, removing all car access to those properties? Um, I kinda, and maybe that's, that's a, a barrier that you can remove? Right. A fence? What have um, you? You got me on both sides here. Yep. Um, I, I believe that they should be taken down. I, I don't think that they should stay. Um, I think listening to the neighbor's testimony and hearing what they've been going through, I really do believe that they should come down now. Um, and our final plat is gonna be probably turned in within a couple weeks. It takes a couple months for a final plat to go through the process. So um, that's why I kind of said, you know, in the fall, because once all the red tape is taken care of, that's when it kind of will start. But a final plat is probably going to be submitted within a couple weeks. So, um, do you have any recommendations? Um, you know, say worst case scenario, the houses are taken down, but they still have people, you know, maybe driving up the driveway and mm -hmm. partying okay. or whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. Who would the neighbors contact in order to maybe put up like a, a barrier to the to the driveway? Oh, um, that would be something that we possibly could do you know put put a gate up or mm -hmm. something um, instead of having it open so people can't just get in randomly are there fences along uh, otherwise I, I don't believe so okay I think but there's a ditch there there's very little shoulder right on yeah. Fletcher yeah so if you're not if you're on if you're using a car mm -hmm. trying to access this this area you're either parking in the ditch or right. going down a driveway right yeah. so yeah I, I would think that would be something that definitely we could do is put up a gate 
so that only the people that should be in there can get in there. So you'd be supportive if we had that as one of the conditions? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Marsha right now? No? Okay, thank you. you bet. I would entertain a motion. I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, with that. Ryman, yes. Oh, Edgerton made the motion and- yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay, it's just so, so muffled. <laughs> uh, um, Campbell. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Joy. Yes. Ryman Yost. Yes. Becky Yes. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carried six to zero. I'll move approval, Becky Yes. Second, Campbell. As amended or just as is? Uh, as is. I'll let other people make an amendment if okay. they'd like to. Yeah. Discussion. I would like to make the amendment as recommended by staff with, and include a secured entrance on the drive. I'll second that. I will. Ryman Yost. Discussion? Um, you know, I think, I think sometimes when we look at development, um, oftentimes raw land out there on the edges of our city may contain structures that are not in their best shape, whether it's a house, a dilapidated barn. Um, it could even be a, a, a pond with a, a, a dam that's not strong, what have you. Um, so I, I worry a little bit about putting the condition here um, because I feel like there's a lot of um, new developments that could come our, in front of us that might have um, unsavory parts of, of their uh, uh, improvements, unsavory improvements on their land that, that and I don't want to get into the, the habit of making those go away while development occurs um, and uh, you know in in due time um, from an efficiency standpoint it would be probably easier and cheaper to take care of this at the time of grading than to do it independently uh, and beforehand um, I would be okay simply supporting a, uh, a, a gate on both drives uh, in lieu of demolition um, so that you can control access um, but otherwise I'll support the motion I think that the applicant has done a nice job of working with the um, the limitations presented to them and uh, I look forward to the development go ahead uh, I would like to amend the amendment to add um, that I, a signed contract could serve as proof of the demolition because as busy as most of the contractors are and with them wanting to come forward with the final plat starting in two weeks and then a month process i'm not sure they can accomplish getting those down in six weeks but if they have a signed contract uh, with someone to demolish and clean it up then i think that should be acceptable Any seconds? I guess I'm not sure I understand because wasn't the motion about just a permit, like having? No, it they, wasn't the completion of the demolition. It was having the permits, demolition permits in place. No, it was to before See they it? come forward with a subdivision permit. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I wrote we, it down. We should get clarification on the motion then, or the amendment. Excuse me. Um, as drafted, it says complete demolition permits, which would mean you not only apply for the demolition permits, but they are completed, the site's inspected, the work um, is done. Thank you. Uh, certainly you could draft it a different way, but that is how I drafted it, that the work would actually be uh, completed. As Marcia noted, typically with uh, any final plat, there are bonds that need provided, escrows. Um, so if they turn it in two weeks, typically it's about two months after that date um, before it is approved that the final plat would be approved so that would give them a little over two months in order to actually complete a demolition permit that may be feasible but I'm not positive okay, thank you and Christy you added on to that wording um, safeguarding the 
driveway. Cure the increased curing, mm -hmm. yes. I didn't specify how. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Not sorry, right. Steve. Um, I would suggest that um, it would say remove all structures at 1000 and 1200 Fletcher Avenue prior to the next final plat, including a secured entrance for any remaining driveways. Perfect. The only thing, okay. sorry, before you go, it's 1220 instead of 1200. Uh, excuse me, 1200 Fletcher Avenue, yes. 1220. Is it 1220? I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Let's get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it shows up on the viewer as 1220. Just want to make sure we got the right address in Correct. there. <laughs> I would remove my amendment to the amendment. Okay. I think if that gives them enough time. Further discussion? No? Um, I'm going to support um, Christie's amendment. Um, I, I appreciate um, Tom's concerns, but um, with this particular one, since the applicant is, you know, okay with these, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and support it. Um, I also due to the neighbor concerns and kind of the frustrations they've had with getting this addressed the timing of the phases that's wh why i'm supporting it on this one um and i also think too that not every there are like you said several many properties that will have dilapidated structures on them but not always are they found by vandals or whatever you want to call them and so since this one has been i, I kind of want to act on it um, so I will be supporting the, the amendment, amendment to the motion. Okay, Jerry, I think we're ready for a vote. Hopefully you know what we're what you're calling. <laughs> I'm going to read it back just to make sure, okay? So this would be adding a new condition 2.3, complete demolition permits and remove all structures at 1000 and 1220 Fletcher Avenue prior to the next final plat, including a secured entrance to limit access. Sounds good to me. Okay, and I have the motion being made. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> and here he comes. When he rips up his mask. Yeah. Fun of a drafting from the dais. Oh, um, I'm sorry. It should say including installation of a secured. Okay. Otherwise, it just sounds like you're saying demolish the structures and the, the secured entrance that does not exactly exist at this point. Oh, so I think nice. we want to say installation of a secured entrance of Good the drive. Okay. Thanks. So much. Thank you, Tim. Earns his money every day. Also, the, the removal of the mask okay. is very specific. Are we clear then? We're clear. Okay. Uh, motion made by Joy, seconded by Ryman Yost. Okay. Campbell. This is, and this is for the amendment? This is the amendment. I'll put yes. Edgerton? Yes. Joy? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Beckius? No. Core? Yes. Motion carried five to one. I would move uh, that we approve. Or we have, we have, it's on, we have it's a on motion. the motion. Okay. So this would be as amended. This would be for the approval. <laughs> Let me see if I can find my notes here. Uh, special permit 05015B as amended. This is conditional approval by staff. Okay, Campbell? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Joy? Yes. Raymond Yost? Yes. Beckius? Yes. Core? Yes. Motion carried, six to zero. Okay. Next okay. item is item 4.1, special permit 20020 to allow for an alternative to imprisonment facility with up to six persons within an existing residence on property generally located at 838 F Street. Again, this is final action on this item unless appealed to the City Council within 14 days. Staff recommendation is for conditional approval to be disposed on this item. I don't see any. Are there any expertise communications that took place or additional information you learned while visiting the site? No. Okay, Steve. 
Uh, Steve Hendrickson with the Planning Department filling in for George Wesselhoff on this item. Uh, have put up here. This is special permit 20020 at uh, approximately 8th and F Street. We'll zoom out here to give you a little bit of a context of the overall site. Uh, you have Cooper Park, uh, uh, Park Middle School to the west. We have 8th Street. Um, we have F Street. The particular property here is in an area zoned R6. We're just off at the southwest corner of downtown. 9th Street is toward the east. Uh, the particular property is a, looks like it was originally built as a single family dwelling. Um, it's an area that is zoned R6, so it is, has a mix of single family, two family, and apartments in the particular area. The special permit is for an alternative for imprisonment facility, which is only allowed by a special permit in residential areas. It's up for up to six persons. Uh, the particular site plan shows that the existing uh, residents would remain. There would be one car parking space off an existing driveway off of F Street. Uh, the remaining three parking stalls would be um, off of the alley. Um, uh, it also shows the, a site plan for the house itself for the interior. One of the conditions of approval is that the, both the exterior and the interior remain generally in their current form. That way the uh, structure could be converted to a, a different residential use in the future if this facility were to move. It also means in terms of the exterior of the, of the existing structure, it is one that generally blends in with the neighborhood so that uh, between these two conditions you're not only trying to look ahead that the structure could be reused but that it is also trying to be generally compatible and remain um, as a part of the neighborhood. Um, the conditions that you have here are very similar to the last one we had on South 28th Street uh, that was before you previously. It was actually the first special permit for an alternative to imprisonment. This is the second one. As was noted in the application on 28th Street, that special permit does not have any specific conditions that go along with it. So uh, both that one and this one, we have recommended conditions that we think are appropriate to address the impact of this use on other uh, uses that are in the other in the area. Uh, we did um, send a notice to Lincoln Public School to see if they had any particular concern uh, in regards to the location uh, and their staff did not let us know of any uh, concerns. They're not taking a position one way or the other. Um, just we wanted to make sure that they were aware in case they did have some uh, concern about the facility. Um, so with that, we are recommending approval. It would be limited to six persons with the conditions that are included. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Steve at this time? No. Okay. Applicant. Good afternoon, members of the Planning Commission. I'm Allison Janicek, Klein Williams Law Firm, located at 233 South 13th Street, Suite 1900. We represent the applicant New Life Place, LLC, with respect to the special permit for an alternative to imprisonment facility, located at 838 F Street. New Life Place operates a transitional living facility at this location as a service for provider for Nebraska State Probation serving women sentenced to probation or women that have been released from prison or jail under a term of post-release supervision. I want to start off with some background on the program. So in August 2015, a bill went into effect that changed many sentencing laws in Nebraska. Legislative Bill 605 expanded the use of probation in lieu of incarceration and adopted the concept of post-release supervision in Nebraska. The Nebraska Probation Administration Act provides the statutory framework for probation and post-release supervision. So in terms of terminology, post-release supervision is a form of probation. Um, the distinction being that that term is used to indicate that post-release individuals have a split sentence. So they've served part of their sentence in incarceration and the latter half of their sentence is on post-release supervision. By contrast, there's some individuals who are just sentenced to probation, meaning they've never you know, been in prison or jail. Um, so we're serving both of those populations. I wanted to make sure I clarified that because I know in our application we 
just said that we were serving post-release individuals and I, wa I wanna make it clear that we're also serving people who have never been incarcerated, they're just on probation. So that's one thing I wanted to clarify on the record. Um, individuals on probation and post-release supervision are subject to certain conditions imposed by the court and subject to the supervision by Nebraska State Probation. So when a court sentences an individual to probation or post-release supervision, it can attach certain conditions as it deems, quote, necessary or likely to ensure that the offender will lead a law-abiding life. The conditions imposed by the court can include, you know, to refrain from unlawful conduct, to meet family responsibilities, employment, education, community service, to be subjected to home visits, to undergo drug testing, to undergo treatment, counseling, to participate participate in various groups sponsored by probation, obviously to report to the probation officer and so forth. And one of the conditions that they can also impose is to reside in a, quote, facility established for the residents of, of persons on probation. So that's, that's kind of how they have the authority to tell someone you have to go live in this transitional living facility. So that, that leads us to transitional living. So Supportive housing is really the foundation for a successful reentry, and it's critically important to reducing recidivism. Unfortunately, however, pro probationers are f probationers face significant obstacles to find places to live as a result of a lack of affordable housing, combined with discrimination that they face in the housing market. In response to to this issue, and in response to the expansion of probation post release supervision in the last five years. Nebraska State Probation established a transitional living program. Transitional living provides short-term housing for probationers and places them in a safe, sober, and stable environment, enabling them to concentrate on treatment and, and or employment, reintegrate into the community, and ultimately become self-sufficient. The goal of this program is to increase success for probationers and alleviate recidivism. But this program would not be possible without a network of service providers to provide this housing um, who are working closely with probation. Um, so New Life Place is an approved service provider for Nebraska State Probation, and its function is truly to provide transitional housing which offers programming and services. Probation and post-release individuals are referred to New Life Place by probation and probation provides financial assistance for these individuals for up to 12 weeks. One of the owners is here and he's going to talk more about the specifics on how to get on the probation provider list, which I think is something people wanna know, more about the programming and services offered and more about the program rules and specific expectations of the residents. I know a lot of the opposition comments are with respect to what rules or regulations are in place, what, you know, people have an issue with the fact that you don't have to have a license to operate this type of facility and and you know we recognize that issue and and want to obviously inform you guys that this type of facility does not have to have some type of separate license from the state but there are requirements to get on the probation provider list that are going to be talked about today and the service providers must comply with the state's service expectations reporting requirements to probation and their financial assistance reimbursement model. So they're, they're locked into what probation's willing to ba basically pay on a voucher per person. Um, who are the residents? So New Life Place has owned this specific property since March 2019. There are currently three women living in the existent, existing residence, which is permitted under the zoning ordinance. All of the residents are women who are either on probation or post-release supervision. There are no men in this facility, and New Life Place does not accept sex offenders or individuals with violent offenses. Um, in the last year that they've been operational, they've had no issues at the site with respect to the police being called. There's been no police reports to our knowledge um, involving residents at that specific location, um, and they've been operating successfully and historically. So the primary functions of the, can I keep Go going? Go ahead. Okay. The primary function of the staff is really to provide that programming and services and engage in ongoing communication with probation officers in regards to case plans. 
Uh, New Life Place staff members are licensed therapists and counselors, but I want to stress that New Life Place does not provide treatment or counseling to the residents. Most of the residents do attend treatment and counseling as a condition of their probation, but that's off-site with a third party. Um, the focus of New Life Place is really to provide structured, supportive living to help facilitate the transition to independent living, which is just one aspect of the conditions of their probation. There are a number of other conditions in place to make sure that these women succeed and do not reoffend. Um, ankle monitors, drug testing multiple times a week, home visits, and of course the treatment and counseling that they're, they're getting through third parties. Um, as was noted by the planner, the Lincoln Municipal Code does not provide a standard for the total number of residents for an alternative to imprisonment facility. But by comparison, a residential health care facility in the R6 zoning district are allowed one person per 750 square feet of lot area. The lot area of this property is a little over 7,000 square feet, which translates to nine residents. Our proposal is only for six, but I just wanted to kind of give some context that mm -hmm. that seems like it would be an appropriate number. And the, the existing residents can comfortably accommodate six individuals um, with the square footage and number of bedrooms that they have. Um, I also want to note that the house is in good condition. I saw some comments that it was like a sweatshop or something, you know, that it was a dilapidated house and we're taking advantage of people. So I just wanted to, to highlight that this house is in good condition and New Life Place will be required by the build, by building and safety to make certain improvements to the property um, before we're granted the special permit, before we get a building permit, such as installing apartment grade fire alarm and, and sprinkler system in, in, the, in, the, in the residence. So, you know, we obviously take the safety of the women um, very seriously. With respect to parking, as was noted, the Lincoln Municipal Code does not provide a specific parking requirement for these types of facilities, but we, we are going to provide four off-street parking stalls as recommended by Planning Department, which will require our owner to add a two-stall parking pad to the back that's accessed via the alleyway. I also want to note that many of these individuals, they don't have a vehicle and they generally find alternative means for transportation. They get bus passes from probation and New Life Place also has a transportation van where one of their staff members will help them make sure they get to appointments and stuff. So they're, not every single resident is going to have a car is what I'm trying to say. Um, with respect to location, we, we do believe that 838 F Street is a great location for these women because the house is located near downtown Lincoln with nearby services that are within walking distance and due to the proximity to the probation office so they can easily walk three, blo or three blocks away to, to get to those appointments and making sure they're meeting all of the requirements uh, in front of them. Um, with respect to neighborhood outreach, I did want to note that we did send a letter to all of the neighbors within a one block radius to explain the proposal and to solicit any questions, concerns, or comments from them. We actually mirrored our mailing list after the mailing list provided by the planning department, so we wanted to make sure our letter went to everyone who, who got the planning department's letter um, about the zoning action, and we did not hear, we were not directly contacted by any of those neighbors with concerns, so I did want to let you guys know of that effort. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the special permit type, why we chose this type. I know that this issue came up at the last hearing and I, I wanted to provide some, some explanation on that. When we, when we looked at this facility and looked at what our options were that were available, we were really considering three, three options. There's the alternative to imprisonment facility, a group home, or a residential healthcare facility. A group home doesn't work because they're limited to disabled persons or children, so we're not serving the type of population that fits within the definition of group home. And then with respect to residential health care facility, I know that we were, you guys were especially wondering why they didn't choose, choose that permit type. And I think the reasoning why is because we're not providing health care, we're not providing treatment and counseling and therapy we're really providing a safe, supportive housing option. Um, 
our facility is unlike the facilities listed in as examples, nursing care, assisted living. These are all places you're going to get care from a service provider who might even be on site 24 seven to make sure everything's okay. So we didn't think that was a good fit. And then obviously I, th I think we do fit squarely within the definition of alternative to imprisonment facility because this is a probationary program. Anyone who resides at our facility is coming to us through probation and there's that connection. So that's, that's why we chose the special permit type. And then just to conclude, I wanted to make one point of clarification from the application. <coughs> In our submission, we had indicated that someone would be on site 16 hours per day, Monday through Friday. Um, I need to clarify that this is not a continuous 16 hour period of somebody sitting at the facility, um, just you know, on site present, um, that while somebody is working during this 16 hour slot and they're stopping by multiple times a day for different lengths of time. Um, but a lot of the, I think there's kind of a misconception that the individuals who are on probation or post-release supervision are locked down. They're just sitting there um, you know, they need a babysitter in effect. Um, but really, during the day, these these women are just like you and I. They're going to work, they're going to school, they're going to appointments or the store. So there's a, a large chunk of the day where no one's at the house. We might go stop by the house, nobody's there. So no one, it, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't mislead the commission in um, stating that people were there 16 hours per day. Um, and I did want to note that you know the the court has deemed this type of housing appropriate for these individuals, and if a higher level of supervision was required, they would be in jail or they would be in some other type of facility. We we do have somebody on call 24/7 to deal with any crises or emergencies, and we do have 24/7 security monitoring, um, both cameras and the door rings, alarms, and stuff like that. Um, so in conclusion, I hope that you can see that New Life Place is providing a service that is critically important to the community and they have a proven track record. We believe this proposal meets all of the requirements from a legal perspective and a land use perspective and we would respectfully request approval of the special permit. Um, the owner is going to come up and give more details on the program. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have or we can wait until after. Um, the two individuals listed in um, the information we got from you mm -hmm. and from the depart planning department, how far away do they live from this facility? Well, one of them's here, so he can probably s speak on that more. I don't, I'm not aware of where their primary residence is. Hey. I know they're both Lincoln locals. They're not, yeah. they're not out of the city, so I, I'll let you speak on where they. I don't understand the question. Where, where do you, where's your primary residence and Jeremy's primary residence? Are oh, you here? Do I at home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you want to come up to the mic? Yep. We'll kind of share. My name is Damian Gilfell, and I own uh, Alcohol Drug Solutions and New Life Place. Um, I live at, uh, I just moved, 7519 <laughs> South 72nd Street. Okay. Correct. So it would take you how long to get to the facility? 10 minutes down Highway 2. Yeah, okay. And then we have other staff members that are on call 24 hours a day, seven days. And I don't, we have a gentleman and his wife um, who do our curfew checks at our homes. Um, and they also, um, that's sporadic, just to, just to uh, keep people on their toes if need to be. Um, and they live a bit closer, but I couldn't state their address yeah. for certain. Thank you. Yep. Other questions right now? I just, oh, sorry, no, I just wanted to ask before we move on, David. Mm -hmm. um, when you're saying we, you're just speaking as the representative of Klein Williams, you're not on the board or actively involved in the program, or are you? Ex no, I'm not, I'm just the attorney for New Life Place. I am, we as in us, okay. <laughs> me helping them. I just, I just, I was, well, sometimes somebody could also be on the board of directors and be you're right, more involved. You're right. So, okay, thanks. And, and when you mentioned um, um, the, the, when you adjusted how the time frame in which the 16 hours a day, Monday through Friday, yes. that, that was helpful. Um, but again, that's Monday through Friday. Is there's no set time frame involved on the weekends? Is that correct? That I, I can speak to that a little bit. Okay, if we'll you're... have them come up. Do I need to say my name again? No. <laughs> Great. Uh, we have uh, supervision uh, uh, curfew checks every every day, seven days a week. 
Um, curfews are 10 o'clock on the weekdays, uh, 12 o'clock on the weekends. Um, if clients are found not to be where they're supposed to be, meaning in the house, then probation officer is notified immediately, and also we're notified, um, and the primary counselor is notified. I should also mention that I own Alcon Drug Solutions, which is a substance use and mental health treatment center here in Nebraska. Uh, Jody Gilfo and I, who's my mother, have owned that place uh, for about 11 years now. Um, and so it's been nice kind of wrap around, having wraparound services. So if somebody at New Life needs any of those services, we're able to provide those at a different location. And so I think that's where the confusion has come in. And so um, as far as supervision, we have a house meeting on Saturdays um, where a licensed therapist comes in and meets with the women. That's mandatory um, to just address any issues that are going on in their community, meaning in the house. In addition to that, they are going to um, counseling appointments, case management appointments throughout the week. Um, and a lot of that is just very sporadic depending on the client's schedule, which as you guys can imagine are very different. Some, some women work at nights, some work in the day. So we have to be very flexible um, with our staff and our staff has, has been very flexible. And they understand that when they're hired, that if you're working with a certain individual and they're in crisis, it is your, you know, but we also work also as a team to, to piggyback what you're asking. If something happens, I'm notified immediately. Um, but fortunately, we haven't had any issues to where that needed to be happened, so. How many other um, facilities are you guys currently operating? Um, right now I have a women's facility in York where I just kind of went through the same process. Um, and then I also have a house, of, um, another men's house in Lincoln. The three? Correct. Okay. And this would only be women at this location? That is correct. And. I wanted to make sure that I understood correctly. So you've had three women in there since March of 2019. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And now you're just kind of looking to expand and have some more exactly residents in there. Mm -hmm. In order to yep, in order to increase that number and really serve serve more residents, serve more people in the community, they need this special permit to you know increase that number from three to six. Now I noticed on your site plan mm -hmm. that it seemed to me and i could be completely wrong mm -hmm. i could only see five bedrooms so i was just wondering does everyone have their own bedroom or how how does that work there are five bedrooms okay thank you yeah there are five bedrooms <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe there was you know a finished basement or something that wasn't shown or we don't but the, i know that um two rooms that are shared in mm -hmm. okay and is that like a twin bed situation or a bunk bed situation or can you talk a little bit? Okay. Two twin beds in one room. But as of right now, they're that's not being utilized. This house is really um, deceptive from the front. It doesn't look that big, but you know, when you look at the layout, you're like, <laughs> there's quite that, a bit. Said it was the, what was the word dilapidating? Yeah, just that it looked like somewhere where migrant the workers nice would stay or something like right, that. We 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 <laughs> have in the lab, we we've had it for about a year. Um, since then, we had to do an asbestos abatement, mm. so we completed that. Um, if you drive by it today, you can, they're just now finishing up the gutters. So we put brand new siding, um, windows um, in the facility, or excuse me, in the house. Um, the, the interesting thing about that home is when you walk inside, it, you feel like you're in a brand new home because the previous owners completely remodeled the inside of the house with granite tops. Um, it's it's really I don't know how I say this. It's not it's not how it it's, it's not how it appears from the curb. Let me just say that, <laughs> but it's starting to. Um, and we pride ourselves on, you know, uh, having uh, comfortable homes um, that are clean. Um, we have professional cleaners that come in. Um, we have, you know, landscaping done by professionals every week. Um, so, just to speak on that, go ahead. Oh, I think you said something. No, I, I am actually. Oh, okay. But I didn't, know, <laughs> but I didn't want to interrupt you. And did I hear correctly that the house is sprinkled as well? It's go. It needs to be as a part of to sure. get a building permit. So yeah. that's one thing we did talk to the building and safety folks about. And there there might also be improvements to make it ADA accessible. And so okay. those were the two big things that they pointed out to us that we were going to do after the fact. Sure. People have questions. I have one more, and then I'll let you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty sure I heard you say that you're not looking to um, house, you know, like sex offenders or you know, violent crimes, you know, those kinds of things. But um, I'm assuming that there's some kind of rule in place, like if they were a sex offender, they can't be within so many feet of a school. Correct. Is the school park? close enough that that would even prevent you from having any sex offenders in if, there if i understand what you're asking is 
if we had a sex offender out, is it for, for far enough away? Right. No. Thank you. No, I, I don't know what the footage is, but let me just speak to that a little bit. Yes. There's a special probation, um, I don't want to say office, but officers within the office that deal with those particular cases. And there's also particular agencies that deal with that particular uh, population. Mm -hmm. We do not. They do not refer to us. Um, so, I, But I can also understand the concern. Um, so so to, to answer that question in the long way, but then in short, no. And, and, and as and one of the one one of the questions that when you're going to present your new agency or program to probation is they'll ask, do you accept sex offenders? You know, do you guys accept women and children? Um, once again, we say no. So. Okay. Thank you for addressing that. All right. So um, you developed the program plan. Okay. So I was just. Curious um, because it's there are several things in here around the timing where it says there is the office is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day, but I'm assuming now that that means the office is off site um, and that one to two staff present it's occasionally throughout the day on Monday through Friday. So those that doesn't match up Monday through Sunday. Okay, well, it says Monday through Friday on here. Okay. <laughs> Um, I was just curious because you have been operating these programs where do people usually go what is their placement at discharge and part of my task and my staff's task is to find them independent living so uh, as the, the system is, is in place now is that they have 84 days or as I say I have 84 days to help this person get successful um, so the question that I mean to answer that question is, is it's very broad um, some clients may go with family members. Um, our goal is to get them into independent living, but as you guys may know, if you, if you have to mark the box that you're a felon, which a lot of these individuals are, finding them independent living has been a, a, a very huge chore of mine. Um, but we've had a lot of success in doing so. Um, some clients uh, have significant others. Um, they live with significant others. And at that time, the probation uh, does visits um, to ensure that that's going to be a nice fit for them. Um, and then typically they're still continued on to probation. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And, and, and I, want, I want to make note that more often than not, especially in, in, in the case of the women's house, typically it's a DV situation or probation has done a home visit and it's not a good fit for them. So they need to find some immediate placement for them. I've gotten calls at 2 in the morning. Hey, we got a situation here. Can you take so-and-so immediately? Absolutely we can. And so when I hear they're criminals or they're drug, they're drug addicts, that's just not who we are. That's not the population we're serving. We do, but that's not, that's not the best picture to, to, to draw. Um, and then what trauma-informed and evidence-based curriculum are you utilizing? We use the matrix model curriculum. Cool. All right. And then um, where it talks about minimum, like, food staples, do you guys provide food, or are they responsible for bringing their own food? I'm just curious. No, it's, I, I laugh because during COVID, we've had so many different <laughs> COVID. I've had to go shopping so many times and, and, and drop groceries off at the door. That's why it's part of my laugh there. Um, I'm starting another house up in New York. Um, we have our, our first client today. Um, and so what I typically do is I call it kicking off a house. We just get it kicked off, and I just we flood it. Um, we also pride ourselves on the newcomer. Oftentimes, maybe say a DV situation, or maybe we, sometimes we get guys off the streets um, that don't have anything. They don't have any family. And so I always tell the, the people in the residence that I put all my money and food into the kitchen. Um, so now you guys, because they're expected to, to supply their own food via food stamps or maybe from their own employment. Um, so food's not an issue. So are they getting their own food then and bringing it in, or are they, you, they're not turning their, okay. Oh, that's I see what you're saying. No, I don't control their food stamps or anything like that. I was going to say, that'd be a whole other. Okay. No, I don't, I don't want to. No, I've and been then down that road. the van, is that a shared van with all the facilities? To that van has uh, it's, it's been typically utilized to transport women to, the, uh, uh, to their appointments. No, I know. I'm just wondering in terms of parking because it said oh, if there's no, two if facility. there's two staff and there's only four parking facilities, you have mm -hmm. two staff and a van that's only leaving one parking. No, I see where you're going. No, the, the van is not on site. All right. Yeah, and I I, did, I just want to note that 
Probation conditions are designed to fit individual needs. So this type of facility might only be appropriate for a certain uh, part of the population, specifically where they're at risk of homelessness or they're in an unsupportive housing situation. They can't find somewhere that's safe and sober. So not everyone who is on probation or post-release supervision is in a facility like this. They just might need it for the short term to get on their feet. So the $90 a day that probation pays per client pays for their place to stay and for programming five hours a week. That's correct. All right. Thanks very much. Any other questions for the applicant right now? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Testimony in support of this application. Any testimony in support? Okay. Testimony in opposition. you can hear anything through these or not <laughs> hi I am not necessarily here against whatever you're, and I didn't get your name so sorry about that Damien, Damien. Okay. Uh, and thank you for doing a very good job of telling me how the system works because you gave me an idea of what's actually going on next door to me my name is Mo Neal I live at 2701 South 13th Street Immediately to my south is 2711, which is owned by uh, CBEX doing business as RDJJS Properties Limited. They have been in the building since basically September with clients. Uh, they are operating much like this facility operated. They are in there with what they claim are three people, and I suspect they will come forward in another year with a request to do a permit for an AIF. Right now, they're operating under the radar, calling themselves a group home. One of the first uh, residents told me that they actually had six residents in the building. Uh, since they've moved in, um, I am very fearful that my own property has gone to hell as far as values for resale. I'm in a three bedroom, two bath house that's in excellent condition in this neighborhood. I'm on the corner. They're my immediate neighbor. That pretty much puts any family with children probably not going to want to buy this house. So then what do I do with it? I have heard uh, people in my position be referred to as NIMBYs, but the truth of the matter is the not in my neighborhood are my backyard people are the ones like the CBEX who live in Wilderness Ridge and then move into facilities where the housing is less expensive so they can operate these facilities. I really blame the state penitentiary system on not doing what they need to do, and it all goes back to uh, state government. Uh, when I first met the CBIX, they were very cheery about all of this. They said we are really just great property managers. I have not seen that. Um, there's been incidents, and I sent you a letter yesterday late that details that. Um, the state police have been there at least once that I know of for uh, serving of warrants. They did say they were for minor things, but they were for two of the individuals. And I do have documentation and photographs from a security system detailing who has been in and out of the building since about the 27th or so of April. Um, It's very funny to me that they have put up security dome uh, systems all over their property, yet when I put up one, they were making fun of it visibly when they'd see it. The residents were not. They didn't pay any attention, but the owners did. They thought it was hilarious that someone would put up security, even though they had it also. Um, it makes me think they're trying to pull something. And from what I hear of the system and how it works, I think that's probably true. Uh, there are more than four people living there at any given time. One young man uh, that I've seen more than anyone else, I suspect, is a resident who's working for the facility. But they do come in and out uh, starting at 5 in the morning, and it goes on till 1. Last night, someone came in at uh, something like 12.54. If there is a uh, curfew there, 
they're not implementing it or they're not aware that it's going on. There has been absolutely no social distancing since the COVID outbreak, the people coming in and out. One couple came in pretty regularly, like once a week or more, and they wore a mask for about three visits and then they quit. So there's that safety damage. The truth of the matter is I feel like this facility is, is coming in and operating under the weather, under the, uh, under the radar uh, first, gets established, and then comes and applies for a permit. That seems to be a little behind the horse. The cart's going too far ahead of itself. And uh, that's probably a problem with planning and zoning, allowing it to happen. I'm sure you feel like your hands are tied with what goes on and how the rules are written and how little ordinance there is uh, coming from City Hall on this. And it, from what I hear from planning and zoning people and city council people, that it is um, everyone's passing the buck on doing anything. And I see a smile, so I know that's probably hitting home. Anyway, I wanted to come and uh, make these points about the property next door to me. It's going to happen again. This same couple have already bought two other houses, I understand, in Woods Park. So they're going to go into that neighborhood too. Um, it's one thing to live in a neighborhood where you've got covenants to prevent this, but then you go and make your living in a neighborhood where the people don't have the same uh, access that you do. So that's it. I just wanted to get this on the record. Any questions? Okay, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Other testimony in opposition? We do. We have a Zoom. Okay. Do I start now? Okay. So I can begin speaking now. Sorry, I can't tell. All right, I'm going to assume that this is okay to start. Uh, my name is Justina Clark. I live at 1008. Oh, you can't hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me now? Okay, hello, my name is Justina Clark. I live at 1008 South 8th Street which is about a block and a half from this um, facility. Um, I have lived in this neighborhood for 10 years. I am the president of the South Salt Creek Community Organization, though I'm not speaking on behalf of the organization because unfortunately with notification only going out within one block of this residence or of the residents, most of the people in our organization are not Can I go now? Okay, thank you. Should I keep waiting? Yep, keep waiting. Okay, sorry. sorry, thank you. Yeah, I know it's hard for everybody. Okay, try again and see if we can hear you any better. Oh, hello, can you hear me now? Not really. <laughs> Sorry. We have Would someone... it be better if I... Oh, there we go. Not... Can, you, can you hear me now? Yes. yes, yes we can. Okay, I'll just start at the beginning again then. Um, my name is Justina Clark. I live at 1008 South 8th Street, which is about a block and a half, two blocks from this um, location. And I'm the president of the South Salt Creek Community Organization, though my statement today is a personal statement and not on behalf of the organization, because um, due to the fact that the notification about this change was only sent to a one block radius of the location, many members of our community organization are not aware of this. Um, you probably have seen that several members of the organization did send in statements after we were notified or we found out about this late last night. So I hope that that will showcase the um, concern 
concerns from the neighborhoods, the neighbors and the residents of this location. Um, I understand that uh, I am happy to hear a little bit more detail about the residents, um, that it would only house women and those without violent crimes, but I'm concerned that what would happen if why uh, does this restriction hold in place? Can they receive this permit and then later decide to have men violent criminals? Um, I'm also just very, very, very concerned about the fact that this is one block from a middle school, very impressionable young people, and one block from a city blo uh, one block from a city park that is a very important part of the most, most historic neighborhood of Lincoln, Nebraska, the South Salt Creek, uh, Cooper Park, the oldest park in Lincoln. Um, as you can imagine, there are many children and families in this area, and it's just very concerning and just surprising to me that we would even consider approving transitional housing right by a school where the, um, there's a very, you know, sensitive population there. I understand that there will not be 24 hour supervision and that there will be no that the hours are not listed on the weekends. So that is very concerning to us as well. It's concerning to me that one of the people who would be having uh, the people that would respond to an emergency lives across town. So how quickly can you really get there in the case of a situation? Um, some other notes that I took as I was listening to people sort of giving their comments. Um, let's see. Our also concern is just what is a plan for accountability with issues that should arise at this transitional housing. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that there have not been any issues since March and would hope that it would continue. But again, you know, this is a um, this is a neighborhood, a lower income socioeconomic neighborhood that already faces plenty of challenges and is already in a lot of transition. I would just ask the council or the planning committee or, you know, all these folks to just consider how would you feel to find out that an alternative to prison home is going across the street from the school where your children attend, the park where your children play. This is just very worry worrisome to me. I am actually on vacation in Alabama right now. I stepped away from my family so that I could come and sit here for the last two hours and speak on behalf of the people on my street my neighborhood organization. Well, I'm not speaking on behalf of my neighborhood organization again, because we did not have an opportunity to find out. Oh, and also I'm very surprised to hear about the notification to LPS. There were no responses. Wow. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We haven't even been in school since March. The teachers and the LPS is crazy right now. So I guess I did that. I'm disappointed to hear that no one spoke back, but they were in very crazy extenuating circumstances right now. So to say that the school had no concern about there being alternative uh, housing a block away from the school. Um, well, there, you know, there's a lot going on. So anyways, I just felt like I really needed to come and say something and speak uh, about this issue and um, raise the concerns of our neighborhood, a neighborhood that's already in transition and already faces enough challenges. And as the woman who's before me spoke, um, you know, it, you, you don't live here. You will put, but we do, we live here. And it is concerning when people want to, uh, establish things like this away. And I understand also the closeness to the probation office and things like that. Um, but you know, that it also is very close again to a park and a school that serve families and children. And I really hope that'll be taken into consideration, um, as you look at this permit and consider where, whether this is something you should approve. Thank you. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, since they've been operating since March of 2019, have you had any problems with this facility or, you know, since it's been there with the three residents? Yeah, no, no, we have not. And I, that's why I said I was happy to hear there have not been any issues since then. My concern is, again, that you're moving it to six actually saying, well, we could put nine. And then also the fact that, you know, right now, while it may be women and no violent offenders, um, what is the what is the plan to or what is there any obligation to keep it that way? Any other questions for her right now? Okay, thank you for taking time out from your um, vacation and for, for holding on for us this long. Uh, thank you very much for the time today. Okay, any other testimony in opposition? No, okay, so staff questions. No. No? This side? No? Um, I have one clarification. I just kind of want to get on record. When we have a special permit, 
the special permit goes with the land not the applicant so correct if this uh, business owner you know say sold this facility to someone else they could still have this type of facility there correct the conditions of the special permit go with the property so they have the ability to sell it to someone else now one of the questions that she just asked us was what if they make changes like they decide to do men instead of women they would not have to come back in front of us for that would they uh, correct the specific conditions that are listed just talk about persons let me verify that yeah six persons so it can switch from women to men okay anyone else think of any questions no oh wait Tracy? this was um, this is an r6 zone is that correct correct the the separate permit that came to us a few weeks ago what what zone was that was that R uh, that area had been down zone from r4 to r2 r2 so it was a different zoning district and and i should clarify um, as an r6 it allows multifamily. you get to build one dwelling unit for every 1100 square feet of lot area so in essence with a 7,000 square foot lot they could build a sixplex on the property if they can get the parking stalls to work and any sixplex could have up to three unrelated persons in one dwelling unit. So you could have a sixplex with three people in each unit and 18 people overall. Anything else right now for staff? Okay, thank you. Applicant rebuttal. So just in response to the concerns with the proximity to the park and the school, I just wanted to note that a lot of these women are moms. They have their own kids that they're trying to work to get back to. They're not predators and they're, they haven't been convicted of a crime which would restrict them from living in the location that, that probation has sent them to. I also wanted to say that I think that the, the name of the application itself is slightly misleading. What does alternative to imprisonment facility imply? And really this is just one, it's a housing option for people with unsupportive housing who are at risk and at risk of homelessness. So it's not an alternative for incarceration, it's a probationary program. And I, I just think it's hard because the name is, is misleading. Um, and then with respect to our neighborhood outreach, we really did try to reach out to all the neighbors that we thought were going to be affected and, and we matched the list that the planning department sent to. Um, we weren't aware of this specific community organization, but I know that the owners would be happy to do any, um, any meetings with them. But with COVID, we thought we'll just send a letter to whoever is getting our letter. And, and the zoning signs have been erected for the, the mm -hmm. period of time since we've filed the application. So there has been a couple week period of time. It's not just a spur of the moment, one day turnaround. Can you tell me yeah. when you did mail that letter? Or, yep, you know? we mailed it um, June 25th. So one day before the letter went out to, I think the neighbor, the, the public hearing notice went out on the 26th. We got the mailing list the day before and sent out our letter the day before, so. Did planning recommend to you at all? I know some applications they do to reach out to the neighborhood association or? They, they did not and we weren't specifically aware of like what neighborhood associations were subject to this property. So we weren't encouraged to reach out to anyone in particular. I really did. I, I guess, I guess for me, um, as I've been going through these trials and tribulations, <coughs> at some point, I just want to make make note: when do we consider this discrimination? As somebody who suffers from substance use disorder and mental health disorder, we're kind of tired of being pushed out of neighborhoods and being told that we can't recover and we can't we can't start our lives over in normal neighborhoods next to parks and schools, and that we need to be over in industrial areas where construction's being done or not not in normal neighborhoods and so i just want i just want to use this platform to be able to say that because it's really becoming frustrating um as 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 somebody who is in this population has recovered in this population or is in recovery in this population it's 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 really disheartening that we're having this big of a problem in 2020 in lincoln nebraska so i just wanted to make that statement um i have a question for you is there i think i know the answer to this but i just want to make sure 
Would you at ever any time have a mix, like both men and women staying in the same house? Absolutely not. Okay. And I assume that since this is kind of your women's house and then you have a separate one that's your men's house, you would leave this as women's, would you ever? That is correct. Okay. Does probation LA, if you do have women who are trying to reunify with their kids, which is important for everybody, can you at some point have the children with them like can they do like an overnight so if they're trying to get custody back so that when they get to an apartment they it, can it, move in together absolutely there's so many ways to answer that first of all there's a lot of amazing organizations in this community that offer that um, we are fortunate to have one of their staff members actually supervising our women's house um, so we're trying to collaborate with other agencies utilizing their resources unfortunately with the house that we have and, and understanding that and I don't want to shoot myself in the foot here, but understanding, you know, the population that's there, I always encourage my, 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 my clients, always be aware who's in the house. Do you want your child there? But so what we'll do is in line with probation saying, hey, Stacy wants to go be with her kids for the weekend. We'd encourage her, maybe go get a hotel room or maybe go to um, a family member's house or significant other. Um, but as far as visitation, um, we have allowed that typically a little bit more lenient. I hate to be sexist because I'm really strong on that too, because men need help, but <laughs> typically more with the women's house, we, we accept that at the men's house. That's an absolute no, no, but that's not really what's on the table right now. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? No. I move we close public hearing. Second. Okay. Jerry. Okay. That was Becky a second? Yes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, Campbell? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Joy? Yes. Raymond Yost? Yes. Becky? Yes. Poor? Yes. Motion carried six to zero. I move that we approve special permit 20020. Second, Becky? Yes. Discussion? Uh, yeah. Um, as I stated on our other one, uh, and have talked with uh, the planning director and, and staff, we need to get some, some parameters on these facilities. They're gonna keep coming forward and they should keep coming forward. But I can totally understand some of the reasoning in some of the people's opposition letters, but we have no control over that at this point in time. We've got to abide by the regulations that were in place when they applied for their special permit. Uh, and so I think it's very important that uh, we get a task force or whatever the planning director desires to work through what should be parameters around uh, these types of facilities. But I will be supporting this. I'll be supporting the, the motion as well. You know, there have been a body of lawmakers, of which we are not, um, that started this issue, that have uh, thought through this issue and continue to address this issue and may continue to address the issue, as, as Dick mentioned. Um, but, you know, there are a whole lot of um, questions being asked and, and what have you that just frankly aren't relevant to what's going on in front of us here today. Um, thank you for the work that you do. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think it's particularly relevant if you're serving men or women at this location. I don't think it's particular. I mean, there, there are a lot of particulars here that people want to ask questions about because they're curious. But at the end of the day, um, this use um, fits with this, this uh, situation. Uh, I, that's not to say that, I, that there may not be um, uh, adjustments needed here or there, but generally speaking, um, you know, lawmakers at the state level said this was important. Um, I believe that actually this sort of um, movement to uh, integrate people into society is actually very important. And at the end of the day, we have to get comfortable with that. People aren't there yet. I think that you see that. Um, but at the end of the day, um, from a land use perspective, there's no problem here. Thanks. I, I'm struggling with this application um, and um, with similar uh, concerns with the last application that we had. Um, I, I still struggle with the fact that this special permit 
was put into place 10 years before the transitional living program was um, put into place by the legislature. And so I feel like there's an opportunity perhaps or a need to consider whether the special permit needs to be adjusted, the conditions of a special permit need to be adjusted in light of the new living transitional program that has been brought forward by the state. And, and those are kind of the general gist. I just feel like it's, um, I'm concerned with that time frame. Um, I, I appreciate the program that's been brought forward and the information was, was very helpful. Um, but again, those, that program can change um, once the special permit's in place and, and that's, that's challenging for folks to understand. Um, and I, this, um, this property is a little bit different from the last one because of the proximity to the school in the park. And um, I, I struggle with that as well. Um, that being said, I, given the um, current state of the law, I will be voting to approve this permit. Um, I also agree with my fellow commissioners. Uh, they've brought up the points that we've struggled with. I do believe those supporting these types of programs have been the directive that we've been handed down from the legislature. And I support, like fellow Commissioner Campbell, uh, to move forward to try to help define that because of, like what uh, Commissioner Edgerton said, uh, the 10 year time frame. But I will be supporting the motion. Um, I just want to thank you for answering so many questions. I, that Part of the reason for me asking so many questions was when I heard that what we were provided with the program plan wasn't necessarily what was happening in reality. And so I just felt like it was important to do dil due diligence on our part to check all of those things out so that neighbors weren't hearing that there was somebody there 16 hours a day and then finding out that there wasn't. Um, and I, with all the fellow commissioners, appreciate that our legislature is working on alternatives to incarceration because I think that's a really important thing and transitioning successfully back into community living to prevent recidivism is better for the individuals, but it's better for our whole community. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate your explanations. It was very thorough um, and it helped me understand some of the differences, um, different classifications. Um, I agree with my fellow commissioners. I really um, think that the city and the county need to look at um, putting some parameters in place on these type of permits. And um, not that there, any, that's anything against you guys. Um, the difference for me between um, this application and our last application is even though um, not a lot of outreach was done to, to the neighborhood, um, I'm not hearing um, like we did last time, you know, there's this problem or that problem that they've seen over the years. And to me, that, that's huge. And that's making a difference for me here. Um, if no, if you've kind of, I hate to word it this way, but if you've kind of flown under the radar and you haven't been causing problems, then to me, you're a good neighbor. And, and that's the most important part. Um, and I did notice in your um, plan that you mentioned something about volunteering offer to volunteer for the neighborhood association we can always use people to deliver newsletters that's huge for us so um and and build some relationships with them and i think that'll go a long way um i do i, I kind of see the proximity to the school and the park as kind of a blessing in this case because that's going to prevent um, some of those more violent offenders from being able to stay here. And I think that that's kind of a, a good thing in this situation and to help alleviate some concerns of some neighbors. So I will support your, your special permit application. Jerry. Okay, this is for the conditional approval of special permit 20020. Campbell. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Joy. Yes. Yos. Yes. Becky. Yes. Yes. Four. Yes. Motion carried six to zero. And I will just note again that this is final action on this item unless appealed to the city council within 14 days. Okay. Jerry, I think we're going to take a quick break. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, the applicant is here on the next item who's going to ask for it to be delayed two weeks. Oh. Oh. Okay. 
Well, Jerry, go ahead and call the next one. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll be calling the next three items together. They're associated. <laughs> Item 4.2A is annexation 20006 to annex an area southwest of Southwest 56th and West O Street. Item 4.2B is change of zone 20011 from AG Agricultural District to H. 3 Highway Commercial District and from AJ Agricultural District to I-1 Industrial District and the Associated Preliminary Plat, which is item 4.2C, Preliminary Plat 20002 for 55 commercial lots on property located south of West O and Southwest 56th Street. All of these are on property generally located at Southwest 56th and O Street Final action is on uh, the preliminary plat is final action by the Planning Commission unless appealed to the City Council within 14 days. Uh, conditional approval for all three items. And are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on these items? I don't see any. Are there any ex parte communications that took place or additional information you learned while visiting the site? No. No. Go ahead. Good afternoon, members of the Planning Commission. Danae Kalkowski, I'm appearing today on behalf of the applicant. We've had an item come up that we uh, may need to request a waiver on, and so we're going to be asking for a three week, or three week, a two week <laughs> deferral on these items, and we'll come back to you the next time ready to go. Perfect. Thank you. Move to approve a deferral. Second. Do we need to put a date in that? July 22nd. Yeah, July 22nd. Thank you. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. Jerry. Okay, this is for a two-week deferral of annexation 20006, change of zone 20011, and preliminary plat 20002. Uh, Campbell. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Joy. Yes. Raymond Yost. Yes. Beckius. Yes. Poor. Yes. Motion carried, six to zero. Do we need to do that on all three I'm or in. just the one? She had it was right. just one okay. motion. I believe okay. we're good for that deferral. Um, I don't see anyone here to testify on this. Hopefully there's no one in the back room. I don't know that they're listening. <laughs> they look done. It appears okay. no. Okay. I would move to adjourn. Second. Oh, go ahead. Is that Edgerton? And okay. just before we vote on that, I'm just going to say that we've suspended the um, speaking on an item that's not on the agenda due to COVID. Jerry. <laughs> Okay. Campbell. Yes. Edgerton. Yes. Joy. Yes. Raymond Yost. Yes. Beckius. Yes. Cor. Yes. Motion carried six to zero. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.